awful. I'm loving this red wine, by the way. I'm, I'm so glad that you guys. Chris got goes on one wine too, and now he loves wine. Oh, I, I'm yeah. a, I'm a red wine fan now. Can't do no, red it's wine. Christine wine. actually. <laughs> Christina. <laughs> Oh, I love red wine. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I went to dance for a week. You can really taste the tannins. <laughs> no, no, it goes like this. You gotta go. Yeah, he's got the wrong glass, isn't he? Oh my God. <sighs> Bit of oak on the palate. <laughs> <laughs> this was age at least 17 years. 17 years. <laughs> 17. I hate people do that at wine tours. I taste them like just just tastes like shit to me. Yeah, <laughs> all wine tastes like shit. All wine tastes like shit. Yeah. I'll, yep. I'll just to be expected. Wait till you turn like thirty. <laughs> yeah, tastes like I'm getting life blind. changes at thirty. That's all I can say. I, I felt the same way about wine. He's like, it all tastes the same. It's sour. It's bitter. It's gross. Did he got absolutely wasted There's at a, a wine tour. A couple of whites I'll make an exception for, like the nice sweet ones that have yeah. like the fruity flavours. They like, like the Moscato y sort of yeah. wine. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's where I start, and then your your palate tastes as you get older. I hope it does because I wish I liked red wine. I really. Do. It's not something you can just go, oh, yeah, I like that straight away. you got to be like, mm. you got, you got to fight through the bitterness. And now I think I've transitioned quite yeah. it's like quite gently. It's like drinking like, or like sour lollies. If you never like sour lollies, all of a sudden you suddenly- You can drink like, sour lollies? I was going to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for something to Sorry, Ray. Like, oh, eating sour lollies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I like sour lollies. I never used to. I'll just go out to the swan and be like, yeah, let me have a taste. Where's your cider taste, love? <laughs> yeah, literally. No vaping. Get out. <laughs> what? <laughs> he doesn't have a vaping cup. <laughs> no, I'm just making reference to our wine tour that we got in trouble. Oh, uh, that was funny. Oh, funny yeah, yeah, we got kicked yeah. out of a winery. Is it really a wine tour if Wait, someone doesn't get in trouble? For a vape. For, yeah, they no, not for the vape, just because they didn't like us. We were a bus full of boys and this- I asked. I was like, "Can yeah. we go over there, away oh, from wow. everyone else?" That's and, more polite and than all my friends. And, he's, and mm. um, the lady was like, "Yeah, as long as it's away from everyone." Then the, this old guy walks past and goes, oh, "I've got blown clouds and shit. Nah, get out of here!" Oh, shit. We're like, "Okay, we won't do it then." And we walked off, and then um, yeah, we asked him about some wine, and he just had some really snark remarks to yeah. us. And then we're just enjoying ourselves. Ten minutes later, um, the bus driver comes on and goes, "You guys are getting kicked out." Oh wow! And we're like, "Oh really?" And he goes, "In no, our we're serious. We're, we're being asked yeah. to leave because." You're all being too rowdy, which I don't think you are, but no, this guy's crazy. No, that is wrong. In, oh. in our defense, we were well behaved that whole day. We were. We That's were. That's we got home. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got told off at 10.30 at night. Well, that was the night <laughs> the before. The night before, yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, we're- yeah, Anyways, we're going on. <laughs> Wine tour things, hey? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, guys, how are we? Oh, yeah, yeah fantastic. <laughs> Real good? Pretty good. Groovy. Groovy. Feeling cool. great. Feeling Happy. good. And that was episode eight. No, no. <laughs> 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 Thanks for coming, week. <laughs> well, that was easy. Yeah. Nah, I'm feeling awesome, man. Feeling great. Good to be back. It's been two weeks, well, since we did our last episode, eh? Yeah, man. And one week of you being sober, eh? Hey? Oh. Yes, it is indeed. I'm Oops, doing the month. Uh, yeah, you've had a pretty month. crazy couple of weeks, eh? Hey? I have indeed, yes. I was looking at yes. your grandma. I was like, shit, he's drinking again. Yeah, I know. I've, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so, damn. <laughs> yeah, I like to have a bit of a uh, bit of a splurge on the old uh, beverages on the weekend and then feel sorry for myself and hate myself until Wednesday and then it all starts again. So I decided to go August. Let's uh, let's have a dry month, eh? Mm. So, yeah. Good, man. Oh, happy days. So Lucky. one week down and three to go. Let's What's see the biggest thing you're noticing so far? Mm. I'm sleeping a lot better. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, I'm sleeping a lot better. Um, no hangovers? Yeah, I'm not dehydrated because I <laughs> drink a lot of water while I was drinking on the weekends. Mm. Like you're supposed to. Water? I'd wow. wake up and I have like a... A third of the way of like a cider or something in the room, and then there's like a perfectly cold water. I'm like, ah, oh, start again, eh, boys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I didn't do that. Uh, but yeah, no, it was sleep, actually sleeping. Full. It wasn't been, half empty. It was full. Yeah. Sleeping's uh, been going pretty well, man. I'm in, I'm enjoying the sleeps. Good. Um, yeah, just body feels great. Good man. I don't feel yeah. Just don't feel exhausted. So yeah. Good. Proud of you, man. Good. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Let's see if you go another three weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. It'll go quick. I'm hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> he's nah, dying already. He's like looking at me like. <laughs> nah, so tonight, right? Normally Fridays are the worst because a lot of the lads like to um, watch footy, obviously, um, on a Friday night. And we either go to a mate's place to watch it and have a barbie and a few beers or just drinks in general. Um, mm. And I've had like six people hit me up because they forgot that I'm, I'm doing this challenge for myself. And yeah, it's just the temptation is there, but. I had to turn the phone on silent because I'm just like, nah, I can't do it. I'm not going to look. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Oh, That's one of the more road. tougher things <laughs> of it. So. Yeah, yeah man. for sure. What about yeah. you, Chris? What's been going on with you, man? What's an update? Give us an update. An update in my life right now is I have converted to liking the pure taste of red wine. <laughs> <laughs> very exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> No, to be honest, nothing too too crazy. I'm just happy it's Friday. It's uh, been a reasonably quick week, but uh, enjoying uh, enjoying my uh, Friday afternoon so far, and uh, looking forward to this episode tonight. And also, not working this weekend is going to be quite nice, I think. So, yeah. have you been working what the last three weeks, or yeah, at least back yeah, to back, yeah, days. pretty much. So, looking forward to having a weekend off and just. Uh, Hanging Re- around, recoup some yeah. some brain cells from all that paint fumes. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, pretty and, uh, much. <laughs> about oh. yourself, brother Ray? What's been happening? Yeah, man? what's what's the latest? Oh God, it's the same thing every single episode when you guys ask me. I'm just run off my feet with work, 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 work. Anything uh, new happened this week for you, or what? Uh, we put up our first seek ad for a new coach. For the business, how's that Ooh. looking? Uh, I have no idea because I don't run that department. That's my partner. So, fair enough. Um, but hopefully, in the next two weeks, we will have a new coach on board, which will take a whole bunch of workload off me. Excellent. Allow me to be more on um, service development and stuff like that for the business, which will be awesome because it means we can really add value to people and stuff like that with who are coaching and stuff. Right. Um, and then it's more what I want to do, like that more educational side of things. Like, yeah, you know, um, I used to hate being in front of a camera, love being in front of a camera now and actually talking to people. I mean, I still swear my fucking head off when I'm in front of the camera and I fuck up my words. Like you should see the, you should see the outtakes. It's just me going, fuck. <laughs> like yeah. I, I want to see these outtakes. Yeah. <laughs> I should put it all together. Just Make fuck, an episode fuck, of outtakes. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Him blinking at the same time. Fuck. Fuck! Or like the same thing that me and Sam, Sam do from F is for Family. Ass cunt! Oh my god! Don't I put, put your head through that fucking wall! <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But no, that's about it, really. Hey, um, business is still growing steadily. Putting um, heads through fucking walls. Yep. Oh, my head through a wall with how fucking stressed out <laughs> I am. Um, that's really it. Hey, um, training's going good. New training program. My body feels broken. So it must be must working. Be working. <laughs> Actually, I yeah. must interject there. The new training program has been fantastic. It's been gone so, so far. Awesome. Uh, sorry. Hell yeah. 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 Me and Chris have been loving it, bro. It's different training whole body, hey? My Ooh, yeah. my leg muscles were screaming at me for three days after doing those lunges with, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My ass was killing me. My calves yes. just calmed sorry, down. Sorry, I take it back. My ass cheek muscles were hurting the most. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to get them peaches peachy again. I mean, <laughs> I've got a perky ass as it is, Ray. I don't know what you're trying to do to me. I know, I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, but you're I know. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to do, but I know yeah. what you're trying to do to me. Fucking 10 years. You don't years. know, now you know. Anyway. Oh, jeez. Well, that's about it, man. Um, but Jake, uh, I want to give the reins over to you, man. Yes, sir. Give us a bit of an intro about our guest for the listeners at home. Yes, yes, yes. I shall indeed, my friend. So tonight we have a special guest on tonight. Um, I have known this person for, I'd say, close to eight years almost. 10 years. 10 years, yes. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> okay, so for the listeners that are new tonight on this episode, um, that was just a joke from the previous, the episode. previous episode. So go if you haven't listened to it, go check it out. Yep. Um, it's hilarious. <laughs> Moving back to where I was. Yes, I've known this guest. She is incredible. She's awesome. Um, yeah, she's a beautiful soul. And yeah, I've been really excited about this episode this week, Ray. Um, yeah, oh, I've just... I've had so much thought and things to I talk about in this episode. It. It's just leaping out of your skin. Yeah, you man, I'm just like, I'm right nervous. Now. I'm actually nervous. <laughs> I'm kind of a bit lost for words because, yeah, I'm excited to talk about this because this particular yeah. person we have been, on the show. We've all been very excited. It's a yeah. very, spe- very special show tonight. It's a very special show and, yeah, what we have in store for you tonight is just, yeah, it's incredible. Like, I am. I'm jumping out of my skin. I'm a bit oh, nervous. I, Jake, you're <laughs> killing me, man. I'm not actually here. I'm not actually here. Just tell us who it is. Tell us who it is. Okay, okay. Without further ado, our special guest tonight, my good friend, Brianna Carey. How are you, Bri? Woo! Welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for coming out. I know it's a bit of a trek from where you are and where you stay. Took three weeks. I won't tell you where that is, but (laughs) thank you for coming out. No worries, mate. Enjoyed the drive, actually. Awesome, awesome. So what's been happening, Bri? Oh, not much. Readings and things. Yeah. The usual. Okay. There's nothing usual about what I do, but, you know, it's usual for me. Yeah. So, what's been happening in the last week, though? Have you been doing much? Ah, oh, let's see. Well, we had 
our friend's birthday last week, so that took a couple of days to recover from. Absolutely, yes. But um, <laughs> still having withdrawals from it right now, actually. <laughs> yeah, literally, you and me both, mate. Yeah. No, not too bad. Got back into readings this week, did a couple, so that was good. Went to class because things are heading back to normal now that COVID's settling down. So, yeah, it's pretty good for me, actually. Very That's cool. awesome. Yeah, okay. Um, so, to add to our special guest on tonight's show, she actually has a beautiful gift. Do you want to tell us what the gift is, Brie? Sure. So, I am a clairvoyant medium. Um, I have been doing this about... Yeah, we're coming up to two years since I discovered this. Um, just working slowly, really, towards my accreditation and just seeing where it takes me because every day is different for somebody like me. But um, starting up doing this so young has come with its own sort of, you know, challenges and things like that. So I just diving imagine. into it, yeah, diving into it slowly has, has worked really well for me. Yeah. And, yeah, just seeing where it takes me for now. Excellent. Very cool. Very, yeah. uh very intriguing. We told you it was Very a special intriguing. episode. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely tonight. So, clairvoyant medium. I've been looking forward to this episode, Bree. Mm-hmm. I've been looking forward to this all week. Awesome. And um, we're very, very excited to have you on. And once again, we appreciate you being here tonight. Yeah, thanks. We've got the room lit up with the old uh, neon light. Hopefully, you're nice and comfortable. And yeah. I made sure the boys had a candle, so it's a bit more. You know, oh, I love that. Cleanse the energy. Out. Yeah, cleanse the energy. Yes, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I've got Jake, my crystals Jake's too, made a so don't worry. As well. yeah, I did make a platter, yes. So I'm impressed with this. Hopefully, you're enjoying that as well. <laughs> <laughs> you just copied the last platter, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, had to, I took a screenshot of what my mum made for us last podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it came out all right. It did, it, it did. did. It's yeah, really okay. good. You chose the right ingredients. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. No, awesome. So, um,. Most people who know me know that I'm into a lot of, I'd say most people call strange topics. I, I'm right into the paranormal and UFO, UFOs and aliens, extraterrestrials. Oh my God, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. A clairvoyant medium. We are, oh, I was yeah, very, very excited to to get into this episode. So, Bree, um, if you could give us a bit of information, how did all of this begin for you? Where did it all start? How did you get involved with being a medium and like what is the beginning of all this for you? It's pretty interesting actually. I, like, I've had a couple of things happen sort of when I was young but nothing that really led me to make this sort of discovery, mainly because it's not something we're taught about really openly, especially in school. It's, it's unheard of. Right. Um, mm. It wasn't really until my best friend passed away. It was about a year and a half afterwards where – her energy popped up really prominently to me and it was very, very different to how your thoughts would be present in your mind. So that kind of um, allowed me, I guess, to distinguish between what I'm thinking and then what's actually coming to me. Um, So from there, I was kind of able to tune into where that was coming from and get other bits for other people as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't think if, um, if she hadn't passed, I'm not actually sure if this would even be happening. To yeah. be honest, it's pretty weird to think about that. So had yeah. you had like little things like maybe not as prominent as her passing or her energy crossing you, but did you have little inclinations earlier? Like, I have a very sharp intuition, yeah. always have. I don't know if that's um, anything to do with being a Virgo because we're very um, observant people as it is and I do often look at people and just kind of get a sense of how they are and why. Yeah. Um, but even when I was a kid, I, I couldn't maintain a conversation with people. I was always looking sort of above them or through them or I just feel like I was getting pulled off in different directions without actually acknowledging or even realising what was going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's quite strange. Okay. And that was kind of like the breaking point, hey? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it, was, it was very uncomfortable even because it's like, you know, a lot of people have really fast paced mental bodies as it is, but then to have this going on as well, it's, it's like a double whammy for me. Jeez. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're saying like most this gift, so to speak, that you have really kicked in when you said your 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 friend had passed away. So when she passed away, did she visit you, so to speak, or did uh, like what what was the experience that really triggered it all for you, like with the passing? It's interesting because obviously it took so long, and I'm not sure if that's maybe because um, I was you know working through obviously um, her passing and grief and things like that. Yeah. So I had some heavy emotions kind of going on. Um, I had a reading done, uh, it would have been maybe 14 months afterwards and we had an amazing connection then and that kind of, well, as overwhelming as it was, it did make me start to kind of think about what actually is um, 
present around me all the time because I couldn't help but think, you know, we've been friends for our entire lives. Like, yeah. there's no way this person would just leave me and that would be it. Right. So, um, yeah, so when she first popped up to me, it was um, it was very quick for me to be able to determine who that was. So I was kind of, I, I guess, waiting in anticipation. Maybe she was waiting until I was ready. I'm not sure. But yeah. when she came up, I knew straight away that that's her. Right. And did no she have doubt. like a message for you when, when, when she popped up? In this? When she first, it was really interesting. I was on my way to work very, very early in the morning. And um, a song came on. I, I didn't think much of it. I didn't really know this song very well, but it was on one of my playlists. And I heard very, very clearly behind my right ear, I heard, that's my best friend. So, so loud. I actually turned around to, to look because I thought, oh my God, somebody's in my car. Because oh, that that's, that's how loud wow. it was. And it was so different. And I don't know if it's maybe because, you know, very early in the morning, the mental body hasn't fully woken up yet. Yeah, so yeah, she was waking, like, very Whoa. loud. Because yeah, right. those early times when she first came through, still to this day, probably the loudest she's been. Wow. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That was the first. I could not imagine that you just casually drive over to work and so it was her voice. It was her exact voice. Wow. Yeah, and the fact that she said, that's my best friend. Yeah. And then I went home and listened to that song. And that's not in the song. And in the song, it just was really relevant to, but I guess, relevant. what yeah. I was working through at the yeah. time. And yeah, it was really crazy. So it's almost like your, your own way of having closure almost. Yeah. 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 She's done so many things since then as well. Like that was just, obviously that was day dot. But since then, she's done some crazy, crazy things to help with that whole, you know, the closure, the grief and moving forward. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, very grateful for it. And is she, is she still with you? Does she still come to you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's so around you, all the time. Would you say maybe she's like kind of like a, a guide for you as well in this? Yeah, because yeah. she'll help me with readings. Um, That's Not awesome. all the That's time because awesome. I have my own spirit guides. Every medium has their own spirit guides mm. and they are attached to them. They're not actually spirits who've passed over. They are entities that are contained within our soul to help us work through life basically and, right, and help right. guide us in the right direction. Um, obviously I use my spirit guides to help with readings. So that's their job for me. Everybody will be different, but she'll come and help with things that she understands and she'll send me references that she understands that I don't, which is very cool. So it's like, I've got an extra little helper yeah. up there. That's yeah. incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. It's very cool. It's like two minds are better than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So like quite when, literally, like literally, yeah. that's exactly yeah. how it feels. Sometimes it's like I've got two souls with me at the moment. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So oh when wow. You're doing these readings, does she come to you just as like a, a voice, or does, do you, do you see her when you're doing these at all? Like it's interesting. Um, I use so clairvoyance is clear seeing. That's actually what that interprets into. So a lot of the time, I will see. Um, I will see things. I don't often see spirit in physical form. I'll usually just see um, sort of gestures and impressions and things, but that's so I can describe, I guess, the mannerisms to my clients so that they can kind of validate who that right. is because those are the things that are important yep. to them. Right. Physical features, not so much, but the things that they would do in their temperament, that's what people want to know. Yeah. But um, I also use my clear audience and clear sentience, so um, clear hearing and clear feeling. Clear feeling is my anchor because that's – I can basically determine what someone's trying to say because of how it feels usually. So that's a really strong one for me. Oh, I didn't even know yeah. those were things. Yeah, yeah. there's like oh, that's six. That's really cool. But it makes sense. Like you've there's, got the word. You know, you can actually, um, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's clear aliens, but it's actually clear smelling. Spirit can actually oh, wow. send us smells. It doesn't happen very often to me, but it does actually happen. It's happened to me um, twice. But my mentor actually, she works with it quite often. Yeah. Yeah, it's really that cool. It's incredible. What would you say is the most like common one that I guess most people would experience? Probably clear audience, audience. the hearing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because that's how our guides will communicate to us as well. Like they hear a voice yeah. or like a sound or something like that, kind of yep. reminds them of someone. Okay, cool. Basically, because yeah. I've um, I've experienced like the aliens. Is it the smell one? Mm -hmm. You saying yeah? Like um, I've smelt my dad's um oh, wow. cologne. Yes. Like yep. at random times. And it's always like around a time when I kind of don't exactly acknowledge that I need guidance or help. Yeah. But then that'll happen and then something will happen after where I go, uh -huh. yeah, dad, kind of like, give me some help. Yeah. Here, it's a reminder that he's there so that when yeah. you go through that, it's a little bit less, I guess, uncomfortable for you because you yeah. know that you've got that support. Yeah. I've had that. For and sure. then I've had like a, it could have just been my eyes, but it could have also been something. But I remember once, um, I can't remember who I was talking to about it. Previously, I think it might have been um, Sam, but uh, it was around the time when my granddad's 
uh, anniversary was coming up mm-hmm. and I was living with my mum at the time and I remember looking, I was, I was doing the dishes late at night, um, pretty much only the kitchen lights on, I'm doing the dishes, my mum's not home mm-hmm. um, and I see like a shadowy figure on my left mm. and then when I turned and looked, it completely disappeared. It was almost like it was an apparition <laughs> of like my sight. Very interesting. And then as soon as I turned, it pops back up again. Yeah. Um, and it was in the exact same spot where my mum had a clear aliens oh. of my granddad's cologne oh, okay. as well. So I kind of like said, maybe that might be him Interesting, as well. Yeah. So I was like, right, okay. I was like, this is, whoa. Yeah, was that's like, very, very cool. Weird. But like, I never felt any fear or anything yeah. like that. You know, like some yeah. people are like, oh, I'm terrified. Like, yep. I was, it was just really, really cool. But, that's yeah. 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 but it's cool that's to know that they're actual, yeah. those are, they're actually titled, I guess, categorised kind of things yeah. that people can experience. I think yeah. that's quite humbling to hear stories like that. It just, mm. yeah, Very cool. kind of puts it back into spe- perspective. Like, <coughs> family's always there no matter what. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so to speak, whether yeah. here or mm. in the next life. I love hearing it too. Us. It makes me feel more comfortable about what I do to know that other people, even though they're not pursuing this for a living, that they still have that connection as well. That's yeah. really, really cool. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Very definitely. comforting. Yeah. I guess on that topic then, like for those that don't, that are very sceptical mm-hmm. then as well, like in your opinion, how would you kind of explain – I guess one, what you do. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, people understand what you do, but sure. like coming straight from you, uh-huh. from your experience, how would you explain it to them? And then, how do you explain your experience when you're giving someone a reading or you're receiving something uh, sure. in that sense? How do you explain it to them so that they have, a, I guess, a bit more of a more of an open mind, but don't seem as skeptical about it? Because obviously, mm-hmm. there's a stigma that kind of comes with it. There unfortunately. is, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess, how would you? I mean, it, it honestly just comes naturally to me now. So yeah. I, I understand why a lot of people wouldn't necessarily be open to it because it's almost like trying to describe to somebody a colour you've never seen. It's like I can only really give you what you're actually willing to listen to and accept and comprehend with your own mind. Yeah. But not everybody has that sort of broad sense of, I guess, perspective um, yeah. with wanting to kind of open up to this whole other world because it really is another world. Yeah. Mm. Um, but what I'll do nowadays when it comes to clients is I'll just – I'll explain to my guides before I go in. I'll just say, you know, help me be the best I can be and really give this client what they need so that their walls can come down for me, enough for me to give them that. So I've got to give them, I guess, little bits at the start because that will make them feel comfortable enough then yep. to kind of start validating and going, okay, well, she's onto something here. I'll give her what she needs. Because if people are closed off going into a reading, it's probably not going to be good. Not going to happen. And yeah, that might not give as much as they give you. That's exactly yeah. right. And that might not be on my end. Like obviously, I do have off days. You yeah. know, like everybody does at their job. But I can only really give you what you're willing to. Does that have to kind of do? I know. Um, like before we started the show, like um, you were mentioning, um, like for instance, with you've had a bit of a break recently, and as well, mm-hmm. it's kind of opened up your heart chakra. Yes. Yeah. Um, and right. it's kind of closed off, not closed off the mind, but it's kind of opened up the that blockage that the mind sometimes mm-hmm. does. Is that kind of in the same sense with people that are coming to you for readings? They kind of need to not be so logical yes. about it as well? Yes. Yeah. Logical thinkers are difficult mm. ones to get through to. I've cracked a couple of them and it's always <laughs> very satisfying. I actually have a friend like, that- yes! Yeah, I have a friend <laughs> gotcha. that's, um, that's very, very high up in psychology and we even got her, which is awesome because people oh, wow. that are from that sort of scientific background, they kind of go against- this sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Cool. They're like, yes. oh, put it on paper, show me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's very hard to prove on paper because what I do is not on paper. It's not, <laughs> and it is so variable, I'd say, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Like you said, like, with this sort of subject, you've got to be willing to be very open. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, it'll just be, like, a, yeah, yeah, very, very difficult to get inside. Yes, yeah. very. Yeah. On other note, though, Brie, mm-hmm. you were telling us before the podcast, um, for the listeners, you have a mentor. I do. Can you give us a bit of a rundown about what it's like to have a mentor in. Oh, it's amazing. So yeah. I, this is one of those things that truly found me when it needed to. Okay. Like literally a friend of mine, I told her what was going on. I was like, look, I'm crazy overwhelmed. I don't understand this. And she went, you should go and see this woman. Like I know she works as a medium, but she might be able to help you as well. And I remember rocking up to her house for the first time with a whole pad full of questions. <laughs> like, am I insane? Like what is happening here? <laughs> yeah. Literally, because this is just where I was at. It was probably about May last year. Um, and she went, okay, well, you're definitely medium. I can see that you're all colourful because she reads auras and things like that. So she's really quite switched on in that area. Um, so she said, I can see you're medium. She said, I want to help you. I want to work with you. So she said, come along to this class and this workshop and things like that. So I went along to a, a Sunday workshop, had a crazy, crazy experience there. I actually gave a client or 
someone that I read, a sitter, we usually call them, actually gave them their dad's name um, in spirit, which was the first time I'd ever done that. And this is someone I don't even know on a first name basis. So that was really, really, really cool. And yeah, after um, the workshop, (laughs) yeah, after the workshop, I spoke to Sam, who's my mentor, and she went, okay, I'm going to take you on as my student. So then she signed me up for her program. So I've got 10 certificates to complete. She yeah. did. She Yeah, she actually saw a lot of potential. She sent me a very sweet email um, last year that I actually screenshotted for the encouragement because she talked about how she's always happy to help students that have great potential. And that was something that I really needed because I really look up to this woman. The force oh, is strong in this one. It's wicked. The awesome. force is strong. She's yeah. A, yeah, she is amazing. When we get together, it's just powerful as. <laughs> That's awesome. So that was, you said 14 months ago, was it? About It would be about 14? that, yeah. yeah okay, it would okay. be. You right. said you got 10 certificates to get through. What are those 10, c- 10 certificates? Um, so they are competency levels. So I've got things to complete in class. There's a couple of homework assignments, essays. Um, we've got to do opening and closing prayers in class and things like that to complete these. So yeah. I've done a couple of essays. I've done lots of homework pieces. I've had to demonstrate that I can do what's called a double link in, in class, which is where I basically go from talking to one spirit to talking to another and going back. So I've done that. Um, I've brought through a couple of her family members in front of her, worked with her and done some of those exercises. So she's passed me on my first three because we do have one-on-one sessions too. So I'll get to do a lot of stuff with her and, and talk to her family members in spirit too. Right. So that helps me get closer to those certificates as well. Okay. So what, yeah, is, what is that like, talking to So spirits? intimidating. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> talking to your mentors, like family members in front of you when she's like sending you stuff as well and you're like, I've got to get this right. Like, please give me something. <laughs> it's almost better reading people that you don't actually know because I do feel like I have nothing to lose and that everything that comes through is coming through for a reason. Do you think her family members are going back to her and giving reviews of you? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be surprised. I know her, her mother- I imagine that's how it would work. Like, well, her mum yeah. and her grandma are both in spirit and she's very, very close to them. Her yeah. grandma, I think, um, I feel actually had some mediumistic abilities as well, I'm sure she mentioned. So I would not be yeah. surprised if they are critiquing me together. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask if, uh, <laughs> yeah. if their gift is like inherited throughout their family. Like A lot of people, it actually is. Is. Yeah, yeah, it's quite so interesting. Do you have any in your family? Like anyone that you know? Of? I actually don't. Um, I, I do feel as though I get a strange pull back to Ireland and England where I've got a lot of family members, but I don't know much about their past, but I do feel a strange connection to them. Mm. So I'm not sure if there was some stuff going on there and maybe I'm getting help without realising. Yeah. I'm not too sure. But when it comes to the mental capability, that would be my mum's side because those are very strong and independent grounded people so that's probably why i've been able to do this for so long yeah Yeah. speaking about family and stuff um Mm -hmm. like how did it feel confronting your folks about oh my god for the first time can you you give us a bit of a it was not a description of how it was (laughs) well it's interesting because when i was about 16 years old i actually used to say to my mom like mom i'm hearing too much in my head like i'm hearing way more than i should be like something's wrong with me And we always thought like it was kind of mental illness and things like that because I did have obviously a bit of a battle with mental illness as a lot of people have. So I think that's the reason why they were so concerned when this first came up. But um, I was actually able to read my mum unexpectedly one day. Her grandma popped up at the shops and when we got home, I was like, all right, go and sit down, mum. I'm going to see what happens here because I wouldn't um, try and connect during the time where I'm at a shopping centre, because that would be crazy. I'd get a thousand people come through. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I got home, I actually sat in the power, as it's called, and we got her grandma through and she showed me her slippers and my mum was able to tell me straight away, yes, that is her. Wow. So that was one of the first things that kind of got my mum and right. then she got to hear a lot about other people and how they their experiences. And I've actually read a couple of my mum's friends and that really shows me that she actually does have faith in my ability because yep. she would not recommend them if she didn't really if think she, something was yeah, going on. Yeah. Yeah, so, good. yeah, and so the, that's uh, really cool. The support basis is uh, very important. I it's think, huge. Especially for this sort of thing. like Because uh-huh. I know there'll be a lot of sceptics out there and people who are mm-hmm. non-believers and going, nah, that's a load of blah, blah, yes. blah, blah. But the thing, I think it's, all, it's all about, you know, just being open-minded. Just mm-hmm. people who don't like this or think it's fringe or whatever, yeah. just just sit down and just be open-minded. Just, yeah. just try it out. One of my favourite quotes, it says, I'm smart enough to know that I don't know everything. I love that because that is just so true. Like if you don't know about something, don't be so quick to, you know, rule it out. Like it doesn't exist. Like actually remain open because otherwise you're going to live a very closed, like very narrow-minded life and really not experience all that you can. So, yeah. What was, um, sorry to cut you off, but what was your um, opinion like 
or your thought on this particular lifestyle before you dove into it yourself? Like, so like growing up, did you ever like, did you believe in it yourself or did you think, okay, I could, I'd love to get red one day? Hmm. I mean, I always had that openness and that belief and that faith, but then again, there wasn't that much about mediums actually present for me to learn about. Right. It, it wasn't something that was just available to us. Like, you know, you can't always just go to the library and get out a book and it's there and you can read and understand and educate. Yeah. So I think that that's, yeah, I think I would have shared the same opinion as a lot of people. Like, I'm open to it, but I don't necessarily understand it. Understand it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Um, you were actually telling me too um, the other day um, to – check out uh, one of your favourite um, mediums yourself, Tyler Henry. Yeah. Tell me how you got on board with him. He is incredible. How did I find – I think a friend of mine might have actually told me, like, you should watch him. He's amazing. But the fact that he's my age, like he's our age, is, yeah. is the most incredible thing because that just showed me, like, okay, it doesn't matter that you're young. You can do this. Like, yeah. You know, I was the young, I'm the youngest in my class by about 10 years at least. Wow. So, yeah, so right. <laughs> having someone else and seeing someone else be so professional at such a young age yeah. has given me that, I guess, that faith that I actually can do it. Like yeah. you don't necessarily need to have years and years of wisdom under your belt to be able to do it. So right, he, right. he is just my inspiration. I just love him. And how long has he been doing it, do you know? He's had this gift since he was a child. Right, okay. So right. since he was about 10 years old. Like a lot of mediums actually have, right. they'll discover this when they're young. Yeah. Right. I wasn't one of those, unfortunately. I would have loved to, but my story is different and that's that's all good. Um, so yeah, he actually, I think, I believe he woke up and knew his grandma was going to pass and she actually did moments later. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was Ooh. his sort of first experience. So, and then he moved to Hollywood and was picked up very, very quickly. His first day in Hollywood, I believe he actually appeared on the Kardashians. Yes, I was reading some of that. Yes. Actually. He's done a lot of celebrity reading. He's done heaps. Yep. Yeah. I was yep. looking at the list. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, he's definitely got a name out yes, there. Yes, he and, has. Uh, some of the people that he's uh, done readings for, I was like, okay, interesting, interesting. A lot of men that you would have assumed would be really quite sceptical, especially, yeah. Um, yeah, there's quite a few of them and they're insanely powerful readings. They're very cool. Yeah. Well, and he is a clairvoyant medium too. He right? is. He yes. uses the same terminology as me. And I actually use the same method as him where he scribbles. While he connects. I noticed Jake, that, yeah. Jake, yeah, I've read Jake yep. and he knows that. I yes. look like a lunatic and I have no <laughs> like idea what I'm drawing. Pen and paper kind of. Literally blank yep. paper and a pen. It, it It's not that so much that I'm writing down what spirit tell me because I need to tell you as quick as possible to get the message out yep. um, in the way yeah. it's supposed to be said. Yep. It's more so that I can focus on a single point of concentration yep. because I feel like it blocks the outside word out just a little bit better. I feel yep. like if I was looking around your house, I'd be a little distracted. Yeah. So that just allows me to focus on a single point so that information is um, as clear as possible to me. And yeah, that's his that's method. Cool. That's incredible. Yeah. But I, I guess it's kind of like doodling. Like when it people are like on the phone or something and they're just drawing random stuff yeah. and scribbling and stuff like that. But they're really in that conversation at yes. the same time. Yeah. yeah. Have, oh. have there been moments where while you've been doing these doodles, have you ever been, so to speak, taken over by a spirit and have them take over your body and do these scribbles and drawings for you or? No, I don't allow spirit to jump into my physical body. Um, I let them come as close as possible without affecting me and I actually ask them that as well. I tell them like, please get nice and close so I can hear you, but do not affect my physical state because yeah. that's very upsetting. I've yeah. had them transfer some of their feelings over to me. So when they passed away, if they passed from... Um, heart attacks, lung cancers. O often I'll actually feel that physically, but oh, only wow. for a moment just so that yeah. I can get the message across and then it goes away. That's yep. unbelievable. Izzy's right. the only person I've allowed into my physical body simply so she can look at her family because spirit world, they don't have mental body, they don't have physical body, therefore they can't see. They can sense, but they cannot see. So oh, I let wow. her jump in so she can look at her mum, look at her cats, look at her family, her house, only temporarily. And then oh, I'm like, okay, so amazing. you need to get out now because <laughs> oh. I need my life back. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it, yeah. This information is is blowing my mind hearing this, but <laughs> but I have heard stories like where spirits come through, and when they do channel people, they do obviously drain a lot of energy from the person that they're channeling oh, yeah. through. And you mentioned before, it's like delving into a different world, and it it it, it must be so so to speak, right? Can yeah. you, can you maybe tell us like about this other world that these spirits? come from sure. and come to and from? Yeah. I can do my best. I mean, I haven't been there since I was just a soul, but I will try my best. Um, so I believe, and we believe in class, we talk about this a lot, that we come from the same place that we end up at. So spirit mm. world is where we start off. 
spirit world is where we end. And that is actually proving to be true because I have been able to bring through a couple of children that didn't even get to be born. They were miscarried oh, wow. because wow. they have a soul. That's the first thing that develops before the organs and things yeah. like that. So they have a soul. So basically what I do is I will start to attempt to raise my vibration up before a reading. So I'm sitting in the power, I'm breathing in golden light and breathing out golden light, filling the room with it so that it basically sends the beacon out to spirit. They'll help me get to where I need to be so that they can connect to me. So they lower themselves at the same time I rise myself up, hence the term medium, because mm. I'm going literally between here and there. So I feel like I, I go- I ask you just before, where does that come from? Yes, that's yeah. where the term well, comes from. So yeah, a medium well. is someone that can go between physical yeah. realm and spirit realm. Yeah. And then from then on, I basically just have to distinguish who's around and who they're for and why they're there. That's Whoa. incredible. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying this the other day as well. Like, um, like it's kind of cool that you say where we end up is where we began and where mm-hmm. we began is where we end up. Very kind of true. Thing. I love that. Um, That's amazing. It's like, um, I guess w- w- a belief I've always had is that you can't destroy energy. No. Well, I mean, that's that's science as well. Like you Correct. can't destroy Preach, energy. Right? Yes. Preach, right? You know, so your soul is energy. Like yes. your consciousness is energy. It has to go somewhere. Everything is energy. Yeah, yeah everything is energy. <laughs> Absolutely, So it everything. has to go somewhere. And then yes. that would also explain things like reincarnations when people Correct. learn stuff uh-huh. that they didn't actually go to And learn. past lives as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Old soul and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. You've yeah, heard yeah. that term before. That's a very common term um, used these days. I think it's the reason for that is because a lot of our generation are the older souls from the past and they've got these unique temperaments. They're well and needed in today's society. Yes, they so are. They are helping lead this generation. Too many new souls life. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, the millennials. Oh, yeah. You guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Like I said before, this subject is truly fascinating. Yeah, excuse I, I us if we're a little bit speechless during oh, this I episode. I get like, this all the time. Like, it's all oh, good. I listen to so many podcasts about spirituality, paranormal, yep. and obviously UFOs and extraterrestrials yes. and stuff. And I've heard the term vibrations brought up in a lot of the more recent podcasts I've been yes. listening to. And it just makes so much sense. Like with Ray talking about energy, I strongly believe that. That mm. obviously, yes, we are all energy and made up of energy. And energy cannot die. It has to transform in some form. Yeah. And when we pass, I think we just, you know, we obviously transform into a different form and we go onto a different plane where the energy exists somewhere else. Yeah. And there must be doors and gateways that come between our realm and the next realm Mm -hmm. where these energies combine and unite and speak to people like yourself who have this gift. And I, I, I think that's incredibly special and it I is just, really cool. There's a lot of really scientific wish that more research. People were open-minded actually. to think like this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me, and, and me both. <laughs> it more. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just. I, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of blown away. We're by a little this, speechless this right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you could, let, like, look back on your life before hunting, harnessing all these skills mm-hmm. that you have now, like. Oh, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm lost for words. <laughs> words, Chris. Yeah, Every episode, I, I, words. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like being a medium now has, has changed your life. Could you think, like, how, how is this, like, oh, sorry, just hang on. I, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, you're gonna have to- a few moments later. You really are speechless. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I feel like a whole bunch of, like, or it could like, be the wine because he smashed through that. <laughs> yeah, no. But obviously, yeah, this has changed your life. And could you imagine not having this gift now? Like, no way. No, no no way. I literally feel, because I came from quite a mentally ill background, I literally feel like spirit have given me a second shot at living a healthy life and just seeing the world for for what it really is and seeing myself for what I really am, which is just like heaven on earth, seriously. Respect. I I, I feel that. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Couldn't have it any other way now, I I don't believe. Wow. Yeah, no, that's cool. (laughs) A question I was thinking before, I think it was um, while you were kind of talking about like – Tyler Henry and stuff like that, yeah. like how he's had it since he he's had the the the, um, the gift since he was like quite young and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Do you believe that um, when you kind of, so for instance for yourself like when mm-hmm. Izzy passed and stuff like that, yes. um, that was kind of like your breaking moment that kind of opened you up yeah. completely um, to that world. Um, I don't know if you can tell right now. I'm one of those logical people, but yes, I'm very okay. open at the same time. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Do you feel that sometimes some people don't quite get 
to that breaking point because they don't have those life experiences that allow them to get there. Yeah, I do actually. And you kind of need that one catalyst, that catalyst, literally mm-hmm. that goes. And just That's kind of what opens starts the, the process of a spiritual awakening. Yeah. Usually you hit rock bottom and then you'll go, okay, no, I need to try something different because the way I'm living it's not is not working yeah, for me. Yeah, because yeah. so, you a traumatic experience that kicks it into gear. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in Tyler Henry's case, it could have been something like that or it could have been literally from his birth. He could have. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You said he was very young when this happened, right? Very. He's about 10 years old, I believe. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I actually do believe – I have a very strong belief though that everybody, every single person has, has the it. capability of being a medium in a spiritual sense – not everybody has it in a mental sense because yeah. it is insanely draining. It is very overwhelming and can be very uncomfortable. So I do feel like with experience and with hardship, you develop those sorts of skills. Mm. So there are a lot of people that are quite happy going about their life and living through physical and mental, you know, just enjoying it, taking it easy and just, you know, doing what comes naturally without necessarily feeling any strong need. They might have the ability and the capability, but they don't feel the strong need. I have a very strong need when it comes to connecting to spirit, especially yeah. because my girl's there. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I feel like there's quite a few different, like, criteria that you would have to meet within yourself to, to be able to do you. this. But I do feel like everybody has capability. Yeah. As, as you mentioned before, you've even felt a connection. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, but that would kind of also kind of tie into, like, let's say the most skeptic of skeptics uh-huh. out there, you know, they're a human being. They're going to have yeah. feelings. Yes. You can't describe feelings. You know, oh, I've got a feeling that this person's not a good person yeah. or I have a gut feeling about this situation. I don't want to do it. Yes. It kind of ties into that. Well, gut so, feeling is another word for intuition, yeah. I believe. Because yeah. if something feels off, you're going to know it. Your body's yeah. going to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There you go, you skeptics. Yeah. <laughs> Eat that. Eat yeah. that. <laughs> don't be skeptic because you probably got like, I don't know, a nanomillimeter of a- I feel like being a skeptical person is like going through life blind. Yeah. That's how I feel about being skeptical. I yeah. could not, yeah. I couldn't handle that kind of life. I mean, it works for some, whatever, but not for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. <laughs> what would you say though, if you could, if you met like your carbon copy or a version of yourself mm-hmm. that was back- when you found your gift a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, what would be your words of advice with present you? Mm-hmm. What would be the words of advice you'd give to that version of you there? Or I guess anyone that's kind of I has that I actually had feeling. to do this a few weeks ago because somebody started in class. I know, that's why I'm asking. That's so weird. <laughs> so Ready somebody- Fire. I had a feeling. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's um, cool. Um, no, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah so yeah. we had somebody start off in class who's very, very new and she literally looks like me two years ago. And I told her, I said, the more what? you put yourself out there and you go and read people, the more you'll see that you're actually onto something here because that gives you confidence. And then with the confidence, you can keep going with this. Mm, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because when I first started and I first connected to my guides and I just would say to myself all the time, how can you do this? Like, you know, this isn't going to work. Like all, all those doubts that most people would feel anyway. And my guides would literally say, just go and read people because yeah. you will see. Because your doubts would be more so built upon conditioning from everyday society. people, society, <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff. This society. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. for sure. And it's yeah. just a case of just go do it. Literally, Who just go and think, read people because yeah, you'll see. They're not going to make you, people aren't going to make you feel better. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's you have to do. And at yeah. the end of the day, I don't really care if there are people that are like, you know, closed off to it, whatever. They don't mm. affect me. The only thing I'm worried about is giving my clients the best opportunity Correct. to yeah. connect because they are putting their faith in me and I appreciate that. They're the people that keep me going. Yeah. So as long as I, you know, prove to them that that connection is, is pure, then that's that's me done. I've done my job. I'm happy. Awesome. Good. Good. I like that answer. Yeah. That makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's how everything should be. Whether you're yeah. a, you know, a clairvoyant medium, a freaking mechanic, mm-hmm. personal trainer. Yeah. Everything comes with Painters. experience. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It comes with that experience and having, you know, the guts to go out and go do it mm-hmm. and then not give a shit about what yeah. skeptics Put yourself or out there. naysayers and stuff like that. Will People say. are going to yeah. judge no matter what yeah. you do, so you may as well just give it a crack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's what I say. Yeah, but I can I can I can't understand how daunting it would be for someone. You know, yeah, in, in that it's realm intimidating, of things. especially yeah. when you're reading people that are old enough to be your parents, and yeah. they're asking you for advice, and you're like, well, "What do you mean? You have a mortgage? Like, I don't even have any." You're money. Three times my age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, you want my advice? Yeah. I'm like, okay, don't worry, I get that all the time. I I coach middle-aged women yeah and they're like oh i'm having a mental breakdown and i'm giving them life advice and they're like oh you're so wise how old are you i'm like 30 they're like oh my god you're like younger than my son i'm like 
Yeah, I've yeah, gone through well. shit. I know stuff. Hey, okay, years doesn't <laughs> mean about wisdom. No experience. It, it's absolutely. Yeah. 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 Older and stronger. Mm. Totally. Age is just a number, Ray. <laughs> True that, Jake. Talk True to me that. after the show, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Uh, <laughs> a goat. Sorry, guys, there's a goat in the studio. Oh, you forgot to feed him again, Ray. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, but Bree, we'll take a little break from the. Uh, Amazing uh, medium talk here. Sure. What are some of your hobbies, man? Like, give us, let the people oh, get a painted picture <laughs> of uh, Brie and her outside world. Okay. I mean, I live for being as different and quirky as possible. Obviously, I have pink hair yes. at the moment, <laughs> but I've also had blue and purple hair, so I do not care at all. I um, noticed your fingernails match your hair colour as well. Someone said that to me yesterday. That's not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it even weirder that my toes are the same colour as well? Oh. <laughs> like a whole toe? Jake, stop staring at the feet. <laughs> yeah, no. Just, I mean, I wasn't going to say anything. Just the polish. <laughs> um, Bree's not actually wearing any Chris, shoes. Chris, your, your nails match your hair as well. <laughs> You're like, no, that's enamel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, look, I, I just, at the moment, my hobbies kind of work into what I'm doing where I'm just, I just try and keep myself as happy and calm and comfortable as possible. So like I walk ex- every single day, I exercise every single day, you know, do lots of yoga, do lots of stretching, look for different kinds of foods I can cook and things like that. I'm just kind of venturing out of my comfort zone at the moment, going in blind a little bit, I guess, yeah. and seeing where it takes me. But yeah, I spend a lot of time with my friends though. I'm really, like I'm really friend oriented person. It's good to see you out and having fun and partying as well. Yes, I know. Anxiety, who? Yeah, that's it. (laughs) I'm back. Yeah, I love it. It's good to see you out though, Brie. Yeah, yeah, you too. It's good to have fun and having a couple of of brewskis. Oh yeah, always good. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so... No, that's incredible. That's awesome that you, you know, you like to keep yourself occupied and busy and yeah. trying to remind myself I am still young. Like I can still have that's fun. That's it, of course. <laughs> 24 years young, damn straight. That's right. <laughs> I'm actually not even 24 yet. It's next month. Oh shit. So there you go. So oh, my bad. baby in the room. <laughs> no, you're fine. I wish I was 24 again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris is like, when I was 17, I, I had, had no my- gray hairs. <laughs> Yeah. I thought that's what you went to the bar before to get them dyed today. Oh, bless. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no. no, we don't all dye our facial hair Hang like on. Jake. Speaking of that, you know what Jake said to me today? He goes, <laughs> oh, you know what you should do? Sorry to interrupt you, but he goes, oh, when you go to the barber today, you should get your beard cut right back and like just just like take all those grey hairs out. And I'm like- Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> no, I said the ends because that's where they are. They're like on the end of his beard. Fuck them out. Nothing yeah. I can do about my grey hairs, Jake. I know. I'm not that silly, man. I'm just saying like the ends <laughs> just look like you dipped it in gloss. Like he's been- Oh, pain- my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wise wizard Chris. <laughs> yeah. Thou shalt gloss. not pass. You <laughs> shall not pass. Every grey hair, their hairs of wisdom. You don't even have kids yet. Jesus. I know. What, what is he stressing about? He's got a pug that's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> He's my baby. True, the fur babies, yes. I can't yeah. wait to have kids. Anyway, oh, bless. <laughs> May as well dye your hair grey before that. Then. Just, just save us some time. <laughs> yeah. He did bleach his hair blonde. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll probably do it again I soon. I remember that. Oh, my God. I actually did see a photo yeah, of that. Yeah, Jonathan Davis. Yeah. Or right. a Backstreet Boy. Mm, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Chris, all Chris is baby. back. All right. Yeah, I thought of Justin first of all. Yeah, Christian Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Okay, so with music um, and being a medium, mm. do you have any connections through music? Yes, actually. It's really interesting. Whenever I'm listening to music, I get sent songs to listen to. I actually made a playlist on my phone called Feed the Soul strictly for this. No way. Right. Yeah, I'm not kidding. There's what? only like 40 or so songs on there, but they are all the songs that have been sent to me by spirit. Is it an interesting abundance of tunes that you get given? Quite a few, yes. Mm. Stairway to Heaven was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not so much songs about spirituality as it is songs mm. that I guess are relevant to me and where I'm at at this point in time. Yeah. So they've been doing this to me for like a year or so now. Izzy will do it to me all the time. She'll go, here, this one's for you. You need to hear this or this is my song for you. This is how I feel about you. Mm. And it really just enhances that connection. I hundred percent believe that that's easy as well because like, oh, I, 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 I didn't know her that well. Like so, like um, 
she was quite good friends with my little brother as well. Yes. And I know that she was like that with Travis as well. Yeah. Like very like, hey, you should do this and stuff like that. And he'd be like, okay. Like, yes. like if I told him okay. anything, he wouldn't listen. Like, Oh, you don't say no to her though. Oh my oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Italian. So. <laughs> the most persistent yeah. person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> She's yeah. like, Ugh. Yeah, lit- she's still the same now. When yeah. she comes through, if I'll block her out, I'll be like, hang on, hang on. She'll be like, excuse me, listen to me. <laughs> like, it's it's no different, really. Does she, and this is just out of like, obviously I didn't know her that well, but I knew yeah. her because like, she, she was quite close with my little bro. Uh-huh. But um, does she ever bring like yellow things to you? That's the weirdest thing. Um, yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. There'll be times where I'm driving and I'll turn my head just as I'm passing a bed of yellow roses or something like that. And then you feel it a punch in her arm and she's like, punch buggy yellow, bang. Oh, it happens consistently. <laughs> and there'll be times if I'm on my way to like a reading or, you know, I'm heading somewhere and it's a little daunting and I'm a little freaked mm. out and I kind of need that extra support. Mm. That's when I'll see a yellow car. And how many times do you see yellow that's cars on the road? So there, there, there's no yellow cars on the road. Um, but it's actually interesting because there's a song that she sent me um, and she showed me the colour yellow and she showed me Coldplay. I was just about to say, it wasn't oh. Coldplay. It was all yes. oh, yellow. And she actually said, this is how I feel about you. And oh my God, I cried the whole way home. I almost had to pull over from that song. So that's very special to me. And that song's called Yellow. That wow. was her colour. Hence the sunflower oh. tattoo on my leg. Mm, your music <laughs> That is for the my soul. girl. It really does. I, yeah, I have headphones in pretty much like probably like five hours a day at least. Mm, <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to lie. It's probably not good for my ears, but it's good for my soul. Yeah, I definitely think <laughs> like my thing that really touches my soul or spirit if you want to call it that um is definitely music music always hits me very strongly yeah it could be anything it could be a soundtrack or it could be you know something that was that's an old school tune yeah i don't know what it is it's something about music that just hits me very strongly it does it hits yeah. every kind of emotion you can think of and it could just be having at the most random time at work and boom this certain song comes on wow it's like a wave mm. but i think music is definitely my channel to Absolutely. Feeling strong emotions, so. Yeah, you and me both, hey. It's funny how you talked about with Izzy and songs and stuff like, Mm -hmm. um, I remember back in high school, just a quick little tangent on that topic, but um, (laughs) yeah, Izzy was a massive hardcore metal fan or whatever you want to talk about. Call it um, different genres, but yeah, we're into heavy metal music in high school, and um, she was a metalhead. Yeah, yeah, she was a metalhead. Yeah, yeah, she liked every genre. I swear, she was yeah very broad. But I just remember. I, lo- I would love to go to art class because she'd always have at least three new albums to show me or, or at least a new artist. And then- um, She always had the goods. Yeah, she just had the goods. Like she'd provide she me with just so much cool oh, yeah. shit. And like, I'd do the same. Like, we'd just be like, just music feed, music feed. And mm-hmm. just talk about how much music's like helped us get through yes. crazy times, difficult times, happy times. Like just, yeah. So I was not only honoured to have that with Izzy, but like to me, yeah, I forever will keep that with me. And like music, even to this day, still like just- it blows me away. And yeah, there's yep. certain songs that I listened to from eight to 10 years ago when I first met Izzy. And mm-hmm. it just like, it takes me straight back it to that moment. It still hits you, doesn't it? I can even like, it's weird as it sounds, but I can taste and remember the air of like <laughs> what it was like when we were talking oh, yeah. about the, yeah. you know, the music Bring and song. Or, sensations. That's it. Yeah. That, yeah. Is the power, like, that is the power of music. It it's, takes you back. It brings you back to somewhere where you yeah. remember yeah. something or it could be a moment in time or it could be someone that you remember or something that you remember from that yeah. time. Mm. People, the power of music. Yeah. Oh, honestly. Yeah, so that was a beautiful moment, and I, yeah, I just wanted to share that with everyone that's listening. That's yeah, awesome. That's true. Uh, that's yeah, lovely. so I love and miss her, and yeah, it's we awesome. We all do. Yeah, <laughs> we all so, do. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I think Chris, Chris looks like he's itching to ask you something oh. pretty yeah, crazy. It's always funny he get asked his questions. Chris so is going to keep me He's here been fighting his lip like, <laughs> since the start of this episode. Like, he's just been like, oh, fucking ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. All right. Chris's question. <laughs> Every we need to make an intro for this. <laughs> we, we really do. We, we, we really have to. We will. Um, I don't know if you've listened to any of the previous episodes, but I ask every guest that we have like my crazy question it's these guys call it what okay. Jake ask a stupid UFO question as he usually says <laughs> that was because your dog was no never mind <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there besides with everything that we've spoken about so far tonight um, yeah. I'll probably jump it jump into a different segment so to speak with this question like I was gonna ask you straight up have you ever seen or witnessed anything in the sense of seeing lights in the sky or potential UFOs or anything of that realm I definitely have. Oh, yes. please explain. Please tell me. Chris um, is like shivering with anticipation yes. right now. He's like, yes, yeah, someone. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I mean, it, it wasn't, don't get me wrong. Like, it's not a really cool story. It's just, I know what stars look like. And this was flat 
and this was wide and this was not a star. It was moving. Like, obviously, stars do move. They vibrate. Mm. They have a vibrational frequency like everything else. Yeah, this thing true. was moving like a plane. It was not right. It was not normal. And this has actually happened to me twice now. Okay. Yeah, I'm when not- When was the first time this happened? Um, the first time would have probably been maybe like uh, four or five years ago. The second time, I, I believe, was um, sometime last year. Okay. What? Yeah, this has happened a couple times. I do definitely believe in UFOs. It's actually funny because I sometimes when I'm going through a hard time, I walk around the house and just look up and be like, "Can you take me now? Like seriously, I'm done." <laughs> oh my god! Like, if you're around, come the same get way, me. 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the start of this year, yeah. you're just like, "Okay, yeah, I'm done. Can we leave? Yeah, at Earth it's now, like, please." If you're up there right now, please come pick up my friends and family and my dog. Literally, I'm ready to go. Like we're done. <laughs> yeah, I do believe that they're out there and watching us. I don't necessarily feel as though they. Um, intend to harm us. I actually feel like the opposite. They're kind of here to help us yeah, maybe get closer to their level of understanding. You hope mm. so. You yeah, hope so. I feel like they have a unique purpose with helping us though. Mm. Right. So yeah. So you said you saw like a strange sort of flat light in yeah. the sky. Like- yeah, and it wasn't typically like this colour of stars. It was almost like a bluey green. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's very different. It was like, awesome. a, like, a, like a frisbee kind of source. Almost, the yeah, same yeah, shape. Yeah. 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 Right, okay, yeah. Okay. What... Um, was it like late at night or early hours of the night? It probably would have been about 9 p.m. It wasn't overly late. I kind of wish it was um, black where I was because obviously we had outdoor lights on because I think I would have had a better view of it right. in pitch black to see really what were, kind of colours were going on. Were you the only one that saw this? Yes, I was. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that the right. way? And I tried to get a video, but I have like a really old iPhone 7 and it just <laughs> it wasn't doing justice. Yeah, it's always the case, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So always wait. If you're going to take a video or a picture of a UFO, it has to be on the worst camera or video ever. I know. So, <laughs> rule? Make sure you always have a DSLR with you yeah. at all times, <laughs> just around your neck. Just yeah. keep it with the batteries charged at all times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, did this light do anything sporadic or anything out of out of the ordinary? Or, um, I mean, it was moving quite quickly through the stars. That's what made me kind of differentiate. But no, not overly. Just heading off somewhere. Okay. Like yeah. at first, did you think it was like a satellite or not? Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. I had a really close look because obviously there are satellites out there. There are drones. Mm. There mm. are, you know, all sorts of things out there. So I did have a good look at this thing and just it was moving way too quick. Like satellites, yeah. they move slowly because they're not in a rush. They're not going anywhere. They're monitoring the air. So in a straight direction. But yeah. this thing was like a weird colour. Yeah. Sort of a different shape, shape and moving differently. And moving that's so pretty cool. Pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's happened to me a couple of times now. This just randomly came to my mind just then. But imagine... Whatever number of years it is, 10 years, maybe not 10 years, maybe like 100, 200, 1,000. Mm. That's going to yeah. be us. I'd point. love that. That is a We're going to be the Jetsons. Raymond, literally that, the that Jetsons. That is a theory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. That sounded awesome. I love the sound effects. <laughs> you know what would be awesome too? You know the green jet, uh, the green tubes in Futurama? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just like, imagine like, oh, right. <laughs> City in five minutes. <laughs> oh, ideally, are we'd like you know how like they've Dude. got Apple Watches, but like for teleportation, so oh, you yeah. could just like put oh. the address in in your maps and just yeah, manifest. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> but imagine if it goes wrong. You, you got a, you got like an ass cheek where your your like your eyeball should be. Like, oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> you come out just as a foot with the face. Oh, <laughs> not again. <laughs> yeah, we're still working out the glitches. Yeah, yeah. big baby. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> we pretty much already have the tube things, you know, like in factories and stuff like that. They already have those vacuum tubes that like- Yeah, but not a human size one. Jump in one, Jake, jump in one. <laughs> <laughs> Help me! <laughs> yeah. Nah, but you know what would also be really cool too is the holograms in Star Wars. And you could like- oh my So God. like I the, the new FaceTime yeah, is the holograms. Yeah, yeah. That'd be so That'd sick. Be sick. I reckon that like, technology like, is not far away. Check out this, I'm on- um, uh, There's already holograms. What? There's already holograms. It's just not as like, mm. you know, um, yeah. cool as like something on a hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a thing I was watching. Uh, basically, there's a it's a box. It's made with mirrors and lights and lasers, basically. Um, what they've done is they took a little ball. It looked like a, um, like a beach ball. Mm-hmm. Chucked it in this box in the middle and the lights reflect off it and stuff like that. And it projects this light into the box that's above it. Um, and what you can do is you can push... Um, your hand and it'll go through it because it's just a reflection. Oh wow! Right, but but in your 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 eyes perceive it as it's actually there. Mm-hmm. But they've also created um, a I don't know if it's if it's air pulses or if it's uh, electromagnetic kind of fields and stuff like that. Yeah. But you could literally go like that to the reflection, and it would 
it would use the electromagnetic fields on the actual physical object down below and move it. So it would the object would react to wow. how you move. That's awesome. But you couldn't grab it. That's, That's yeah. very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Insane. It was fucking sick. I was like, Whoa. I thought you were going to say the rolling out. Moon pa, what a time to be alive. The rolling out <laughs> concert with Tupac that they did the- Yeah, program. I was just thinking of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so sick. Did you see it? Which one? The, the Tupac. Um, oh, I've seen the actual two-pack thing. Yeah, 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 the Rolling yeah. Loud thing, how yeah. they did it, and they had yeah. it on stage. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. That's all. Anyways, that's, that's just me going on a that, that, That's a hologram. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's fucking sick. Yeah. That's very cool. The future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. a Simpsons reference, by the way. I, I did get that. Thank no you. <laughs> what a time to be alive. I said that, Chris. I know, but I'm just saying it again because it's cool. Because it is. It's cute. It's to be alive. It's cute. I think Ray said it a little better, though. Yeah. Yeah, true. All right. I did just come out of a freezer. <laughs> I was wondering why you had some ice Welcome in your beard. Welcome to the land of tomorrow. <laughs> is that what it is on future? No, wrong show. I babe. just said The Simpsons. What? <laughs> no, no, no. When, Welcome back, Jake. When Fry comes Hello. out, eh? No, no, honey, no. Oh, devastating. Although a similar concept, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cryogenic, yeah. freezing a human thing. Oh, right, I'm just going to shut up now. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bree. Yes. If you were put in front of a massive crowd right now mm-hmm. in this world and the next, and mm-hmm. you had to give them worldly words of wisdom, oh boy, what would you give for them? The first thing I would say, I, I would definitely encourage that you put yourself first. I know that sounds really cliche, but that is immensely powerful because it will help you discover a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's probably what I would say to everybody. Don't be afraid. And don't be uncomfortable because you've only got one life and one body. It's mm. yours. You may as well enjoy it. Yeah. Good. Beautiful. Yeah. I like that. Simple. Yeah. And to the point and people can perceive yeah. that however they want it's to It's simple but it's powerful because yeah. just putting yourself first, you'll open a whole bunch of doors. Yeah. Yeah. They might not be right there, but they are coming. Literally do what you're supposed to do on an aeroplane when it's crashing. <laughs> Apply that to everywhere apply else. Apply that life. to every single <laughs> moment yeah. of your life. <laughs> you just walk around with an air mask. <laughs> oh, no, okay, man. I'm not, not making fun. Of that. Like you know, uh, take care of yourself first. Yes, otherwise apl- there's not going to be that. a you to take care of everybody else. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that is so true no. though. Because if you don't do that, then what are you going to be able to give to other people? Yeah. It's as soon as I started to put myself first, other people were able to see that and see me for who I was, and that in turn was one of the main things I wanted was for people to see me for who I really am. So, yeah. yeah, that is why that's what I would say to other people. It's It's been crazy powerful for me and the minute you start doing it is the minute your life changes, I swear. Good. Yeah. Very nice. Respect. That's beautiful. I love yeah. it. Thanks, it's wicked. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. And if people want to get in touch with you, Brie, where can they find you? Like, can you can you plug uh, your socials for us? Like- yeah, I usually just go by my personal Instagram, which is my name, so it's Brianna Carey. Um, so I do a lot of mediumship posts and things like that too because I'm really trying to target like our generation who obviously are one of the main users of Instagram. Right. But I will eventually branch out and hopefully maybe even start a podcast of my own. Who knows? But um, yeah, I will do a couple of other okay. socials and things like that as well. But that's my main for now. Okay. Hey, don't discriminate. My mum's on Instagram. She just commented on one of my posts. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> She's like, you can do it, son. Oh, I love that. <laughs> All right, so if people want to get in touch with you for a reading or just, just to talk to you in general, where, yeah. we, where would be the best place to go right now? It probably would be either my Insta or my Facebook because they're the same name. Um, but then when it comes to friends and things wanting to recommend people, I'll always give out my number because I do have a phone just for clients. Okay. Okay, cool. Right. Is that something you want to share? Is that something you want them to yeah. reach can, out to you first? Yeah, if, I can put it up if you guys if, if you want like, me to say go it. For it. So 0497 480 410. That's where you can reach me if you would like a reading. We'll pop that in the show notes as well for you as well. Perfect. Definitely. Sounds yes. good. Yes, we'll lock that in. Perfect. Wonderful. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight. We thank appreciate you. you. That was thank really you, cool. It's been a, I mean, guys, I don't know what to say. I'm a bit lost for words right now. But very, this has very, been very eye opening. Yeah, to, it has like, been. Right. And yeah, yeah. I've spoken to people that have had, you know, um, the certain set of skills and mm-hmm. gifts that you have as well, but like not been able to actually fully like tap in and taking words from Jake's mouth, deep dive yes. into, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, into, you know, like what you actually experience and yeah, for sure. get into your mind kind of thing as well. So uh-huh. it's been very cool. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, no, thank you. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure, Bree. Thank you so much for coming out and being on our podcast. 
um, and taking an hour out of your day or, or night, I should say so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sun's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> What's your look time? At that? <laughs> no, thank you so much. You're a beautiful soul. We appreciate you for coming out. Um, and yeah, we'd love to have you back on later on down the track. Hopefully, much respect, much respect. Yeah, and hopefully, yeah. you do end up starting a podcast of your own. We'll, yes, uh, I would love to. Definitely have a chit chat with you on that. Hopefully, we'd love to come on for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, if we invite, <laughs> maybe we can join forces for an episode. Oh, <laughs> sounds like a plan. Hell yeah, love it. All right. Okay, guys. Well, um, anything else you guys like to say? Um, I I already have a name for it. Oh yeah. People of the reading table. <laughs> that is actually really cool. So that is really P-O-T-R-T, cool. P O T R T. The Potter. Love that. Potter. <laughs> I don't know why you have an accent with it, but yeah. Potter. Potter. <laughs> it just sounds better with Miss the accent. Potter. Yeah. <laughs> makes it. <laughs> awesome. Let's That's do it. Cool. No, thanks for coming right. on. We thank you so thank you. We much. Appreciate thank you, you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank Take you very care. Much. much love. Thank you for listening, people. Um, this episode uh, was a special one. Number eight, done and dusted. Tune in in a couple of weeks' time for number nine. You much Peace love, guys. guys. Peace. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, I love red wine. Oh my god.